One thing you can use a dynamical system for is to model certain probability situations. So like all dynamical systems, there will be a vector v in Rn that represents the states of the system. In a probability model, the states are the probabilities of the system, and each, in each time step, the system can transition from one state to the another. And this is a bit different from previous examples, where the states represented different but interacting quantities. <clears throat> the action of the matrix A represents the probability of shifting from one state to another in the time step. This is best illustrated by a graph with labeled edges, and here is one such graph. There are three situations where this state can be in. Each arrow is a transition. The number is the probability of the transition. So for example, the probability of staying at 1 is 20%, the probability of going from 1 to 2 is 40%, and the probability of going from 1 to 3 is also 40%. These three add up to 100, which is good. All the outgoing probabilities need to add up to 100% for the probability to make any kind of sense at all. Here is the matrix representation of this graph. X, Y, and Z are probabilities of being in each of the three states. All of the transition arrows are now matrix entries. Each column is the outgoing probability from a state. Column 1 from state 1, column 2 from state 2, and column 3 from state 3. All of the columns add up to 1, and again this is necessary to make probability make sense. Let me show you some examples of how this develops over time. Say I start in state 2. The initial vector then is 0, 1, 0. It's 100% probability that you're in state 2. Well, then I apply the matrix. After five applications, I have this vector. And now it's roughly 30% likely to be in state 1, 33% likely to be in state 2, and 37% likely to be in state 3. Also notice that the change from V3 to V4 to V5 is pretty minimal, so it's looking like the probabilities are starting to stabilize. Does this always happen? And if it does, how would I know? Well, from that example, now let me give you the general setup and formal definitions. A vector of all positive entries where the entries add up to 1 is a probability vector or a stochastic vector. It's a vector that represents probability. And a matrix where all the columns add up to 1 is called a stochastic matrix and in some situations just a left stochastic matrix. The action of a stochastic matrix preserves stochastic vectors. They will still match probabilities, they will still have the property of being positive and adding up to 1. In this way, I can make a dynamical system that is all about probability, and this is called a Markov chain. The matrix is a stochastic matrix, and the starting vector is a stochastic vector. A Markov chain is a probability model using linear algebra. So how do Markov chains behave? I will assume the stochastic matrix is irreducible. If it is not irreducible, that means that some states are permanently separated with no transition between them. That can happen, but this is usually not desired for probability, so irreducibility is a reasonable assumption for these models. The dominant eigenvalue of a stochastic matrix is always 1. Unlike the Leslie matrices in the last video, the value of the eigenvalue isn't actually the determining factor. Other information will end up being important here. All other eigenvalues have smaller absolute value, which means that they will all decay, so the dominant eigenvalue and vector control the long-term behavior. Instead of the eigenvalue then doing the big interpretation, the eigenvector that matches it is the thing that I'm going to really care about, and I'll show this in an example. Here is a probability transition graph between three states. Note that it is impossible to stay at state 1 or 2, there is zero probability for those arrows, and having zero probability for some arrows is perfectly fine. Here is the matching matrix. I've asked a computer for the eigenvector and eigenvalue calculations. For the eigenvector, I got these values from the computer. However, I want a stochastic vector, or else it's meaningless for probability. But remember that I can scale eigenvectors. So I add up all the coefficients and divide by that number, and I scale this to be a stochastic vector, with entries that add up to 1. So this is the dominant stochastic eigenvector. All other behaviors decay away, so this entirely determines the behavior of the system. 
In the long run, there's a 45.2% probability of being state 1, 13.6% for state 2, and 41.2% for state 3. Notice in this that I didn't actually define any starting situation. One of the important qualities of Markov change, chain is that it actually doesn't depend at all on the starting values. Whichever state you start in, the ending probabilities are in fact exactly the same. Finally, here is another example. This is a graph with five states and transitions between them. And this is the matching matrix. Again, I asked a computer for the dominant eigenvector, and I scaled it to be a stochastic vector. These are the probabilities for ending up in each of the states. Again, this doesn't depend at all on where I start. Eventually, for any starting point, these probabilities will settle down to exactly the same values.